You have questions, I have answers. Girl, we're painting today. I've been in this apartment for over a year and I painted, I've painted a bunch of it, but I still haven't painted this hallway. It's just like gray and I kind of hate gray. I haven't gotten around to it and I haven't painted the bathroom. And that's a problem because there's an upcoming bathroom makeover, a bathroom makeover that is coming your way. But I gotta paint that situation. So we're gonna lay the groundwork here. And while we do it, we're gonna chit chat. We're gonna talk smack. I'm gonna answer some questions. I'm gonna spill some tea and there's gonna be some design chat, there's gonna be some tech chat, there's gonna be some personal chat, chit chat. This video is kindly sponsored by Thrive Market and I'll tell you more about them later. I get a lot of questions about this hallway. Hilariously, people are like, how did you hang your art here? I did not, it's just thrown up there. This hallway, I basically think of as a closet. Like this is where I hang extra stuff that doesn't have a place somewhere else. So like nothing is intentionally placed. Like look at the spacing between stuff, it's very random. But I kind of like that it's just loosey goosey town in here. But I'm gonna have to take this stuff down. Also, I'm using a new microphone today. I've had this for a while, but I have been afraid to use it and not use it right. I fondly refer to this as the Kelly Stamps mic. If the audio is a little different, I hope it's okay. If it's bad, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm gonna be able to improve it, but I do apologize. I wanna give a shout out to my friend, Amy, who's also a YouTuber. She's one of like th only three YouTube friends I have, and she's a DC vlogger. She did a video basically like this the other week, just by coincidence. And although I did not get the idea to do this from her, it was a funny coincidence, so I couldn't not shout her out over it. Go check out her vlogs, they're super fun. She has a lot of like nine to five work life stuff, day in the life, and, like gal living in the city. She's super sweet and you guys should watch her videos. Oh my God, look at this guy. This is where the guy, the YouTube guy ended up going. And just this week I hit 400K subscribers. I love you guys. The weirdest, the weirdest possible thing. The weirdest possible thing. Two years ago, I had, I had like never, never ever watched YouTube and was just like working a tech job that I was unhappy in, like living in Ohio. And was just like, wow, I'm really not good at anything. So it's a really nice feeling to have found a bunch of people who are like, hey, we share these interests. It's, it's very weird, it's very weird. It's very weird on YouTube too because it's very abstract. It's not like I'm at a stadium performing a big show to all these people and I can like see it. It's just like me alone in my house. It's just like me alone hanging out, like editing at 2 a.m. So it's a very abstract, surreal thing. Anyway, first question I got, are you related to Henry Winkler? I am not. If you're familiar with Henry Winkler, the Fonz, I wish I was, but I'm not, no relation. Although I was, my aunt texted me the other day. She like Googled my name. And one of the first questions that comes up is like, I think if I'm related to Henry Winkler, and I think it said that I was. My aunt texted me, this is my dad's sister, my alleged dad's sister. And I was like, oh man, that's crazy news. Have you let your brother know yet that he is not my father? Gotta break it to him. This is unsafe, this is unsafe. You are not supposed to stand on this part of the ladder. That's for the paint bucket. Oh well. Let's do a design question. How can you include some decor inspired in a city you love without being tacky? That's a really great, great question. I feel like I would give the same advice for that for like any, incorporating any decor style you like. Like, I don't like to just copy and paste a style. Think about like, what are the characteristics of that style or the characteristics of the city specific inspo that you like. I've always remember this when I was like 12, my family went to Rome, I think. And we stayed in this hotel that was also a convent. And it was just so cool. It was very sparse with a lot of like dark wood pieces, delicate lines in the furniture. And it was kind of pared down. It was beautiful, but it was also like very simple. It was a convent. And I think that always stuck with me. And I can like look around and see it in like reflected in my living room and stuff. Whatever the inspo is, like boil it down to like a few of the characteristics you like, and then bring those characteristics into your space. What did you not like slash find fulfilling about your tech career? If you're new here, I did software development and UX design for about four years. And I went into that after my career in acting, which I 
didn't take off and I was like, okay, I'm done with that. I actually just did a career episode on my podcast too, which I'll link. It's always interesting to me to talk about career changes because like what you need in a career will continue to change throughout your life because you're gonna keep changing. What the f why is this so heavy? Whoa, dog. I'm always ready for me to get like brutally injured or smashed or like cut open on camera. It's gonna happen one of these days, it's kind of sad. And when it happens, we can play back this clip of foreshadowing. Please don't fall. Okay. I went into tech because I actually really liked the people. That continued to be true. I liked the people in tech a lot. I thought they were like really smart without being like egomaniacs. I mean, you can find exceptions. Of course, there's a variety in any field. There's also like a lot of creative people, but they weren't like obnoxious about it. So I really liked just the feeling of being in the tech world. The work itself was like, there's structure to the work. There are rules, there's logic, and that felt very satisfying coming out of like the nebulous career of acting and art and like there are no answers. And I was just like, give me some structure. So I liked that about it a lot. There's a lot of problem solving, like when you're in the code and you're in the flow and you know what you're building, it's incredibly rewarding to like see code work. But the downfalls were that I did not find it creative enough at all. There were creative aspects, even in the design, but like I didn't really find it creative, mostly probably because I didn't care about the problems I was solving. And it didn't actually leverage what I feel like my actual talents were. I would say this to my boss all the time. I was just like, this is not what I'm good at. And she'd be like, yes, you are. And I was like, no, I feel like these people, they don't even know what I'm good at. Like, I'm a good writer. Like, I'm like humorous. I like to do like philosophical reflections and, and there was no place really for any of that in tech. Eventually I felt like I'm okay at this, but I felt like I wasn't even using the talents that like make me unique. Like everyone has those talents and I felt like I wasn't using them at all. So I was like, oh, that's kind of a waste. Can you, I'm about to knock this thing over. Can you please, can you please? Today we are painting with Sherwin-Williams extra white. I'm only allowed to paint my apartment white or cream, I think my landlord said. However, as you'll see, I painted the kitchen blue. I did ask his permission for that. I think if I ask, he'll let me keep painting things different colors, but for the hallway, whatever, I'm fine with white for now. I do wanna paint the living room a color. Can you guess what color? Can you guess what color? Guess in the comments and I will, I will wink maybe if somebody guesses it correct. Two like design accounts I'm really loving recently, at least on Instagram are, I don't know if you, this is how you say it, but Choosed and Co. Ch Chuzzed, Chuzzed and Co. And then also Harris Kenjar. And he's, he's not a designer, he's a photographer, but he's an interior photographer. So he has got a lot of amazing, like a whole variety of beautiful work on his um, page that he photographs. One of the main things I think about recently for creativity that I think applies to everyone is that like, yes, creativity I think comes from A, going out and experiencing the world and having things to react to or have opinions about or be inspired by. And the other part is getting bored. Like if I, to me, creativity is like, you have to take stuff in and be inspired, but then you also have to like incubate and simmer on it. So if I don't pack in enough time, like right now I'm like churning out videos and I know that if I don't take a break soon, the video quality will drop because I need time to like go experience the world in order to have anything to say. And I also need incubation time to get bored. Whether I'm doing YouTube video or creative project, like I need, I kind of have to like starve myself creatively for a little bit and like let myself like ramp up a bit of energy until I'm suddenly like, I gotta make something. One of my work goals this year is actually taking at least one week off like every quarter. So it's like maybe four weeks off in the year, which is less than I got off in my tech job. But it's like, it's hard to take time off with YouTube because you're like basically punished in social media for taking time off. The platforms don't really support that. Whether it punishes me or not, my priority is video quality. And um, I know that if like taking, taking the time off is actually, um, productivity as far as creative work. I think and for everybody. So I don't know, that's something I think a lot about recently. I have not used like paper as a drop cloth before. I usually use a canvas drop cloth, but paint goes through a canvas drop cloth, at least the way I'm doing it. 
So I don't know, I've seen people do this. I'm gonna try it and see how it goes. Oh, this is dumb. This is dumb. This is dumb. This is dumb. Oh, hair's in the paint. Okay, hair's in the paint. Okay, I've more or less cut in. Doesn't look like any progress. All right, let's knock out a few quick ones and I need a snack. I need a snack. What type of camera do you use? Canon EOS M50. I'll link it below. And I use a Sigma lens. Why is society? I agree. Thoughts on C Cincinnati. So I lived in Cincinnati with my ex. That's where he was from. I liked it. I was happy to be there. Super cute. Everyone knows everyone. Great place to raise a family. That was the idea. Um, didn't seem like as much of a fun place to be single. <laughs> Painting is so ridiculous. I've been working for like three hours now and I haven't rolled a single thing. Oh yes. So satisfying to actually see paint on the wall finally. <laughs> Got a lot of questions like these about family, having kids, getting married, blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you the honest answer. I'm not, I don't like stress about getting married. If I meet someone who I love in that way, like, yeah, I expect them to marry me. I do. I'm fucking traditional or whatever. Like, yes, I expect them to marry me. I don't know that like, I think I'll meet somebody, but I could not. I would like to, but the way that I think about it is that, like, what are the alternatives? That you settle for, like, something that's not a relationship that lifts you up and energizes you and, like, fulfills you in all these colorful ways. I'm not going to do that because that's, like, every marriage, like, look at, like, basically 90% of the marriages you know. That, to me, that's not an option. The settling, like, I'm not, that's not an option. I guess that's it. Like, be with someone you hate, I guess, is the only other thing. So I'm not going to do those. If I meet someone, I meet somebody. There's not really anything to stress about. Like I put myself out there. I try to, you know, expand my horizons and act intentionally and like do my best job at it. And like that, there's no point in worrying. Like uh, I feel like I'll meet someone, but if I won't, then I won't. Worrying won't help me meet somebody. So I don't worry about it. I will say what's much more important to me than getting married is having kids. I have always felt like until I'm a parent, I won't really be fully myself. It's just always felt like I won't be me. I won't be all of me until I am a parent. And I don't need someone else to do it with. Like I, I would prefer someone else. I would prefer a partner. But if I'm single at a certain age and I don't know what age it is, so don't ask me, but if I'm single at a certain age, I'll just have kids on my own. It'll be difficult. It'll be totally difficult and people do it. And um, that's so much more like that, I'm not willing to give up. Getting married, I mean, sure, maybe, whatever. But having kids, no, I'm not giving that up. I'm doing it with someone or I'm doing it alone. That's a non-negotiable. And that's something I can control. Like whether I get married, I don't know. Whether I fall in love, whether I meet somebody, I can't control that. But like, I can, I can, make, I can make people out of my body and I will. I'm supposed to talk about our sponsor, which is Thrive Market, but I have already eaten almost all of the food that I got from Thrive Market. I'm going to proceed anyway and hope that that is an asset to this sponsorship because I genuinely love Thrive Market, so please don't hold that against me. Thrive Market is sponsoring today's video. They're very simply an online membership-based grocery aimed at making healthy living, accessible, easy, affordable, to more people. And there are guaranteed savings on every order. Almost all of my grocery shopping, I do buy delivery because I'm just a busy bitch. I enjoy a lot of candy, but it's never been a habit of mine to eat processed food. Still like treats and snacks and all of that, but it, it does feel a lot better to go with something that has like better ingredients for you. So I love getting snacks and stuff th from Thrive Market. As I said, most of this food has been eaten. I think I'm supposed to demonstrate a lot of it, but mo I have eaten most of it already. The thing that is blowing my mind, let me change your world right now. Let me change your world right now. Can you even see this package that I've crumpled up because it's what I'm eating every day? These are like sour cranberries. If you like Sour Patch Kids, welcome to the rest of your life. Oh my God. This is my new favorite thing I've discovered. They're organic cranberries sweetened with like watermelon. 
I don't, I don't feel like that showed you anything, but they're really good. Plantain chips. I got three of these bags. This is the one that isn't eaten yet. Oh, this is the best gluten-free find. Mexican wedding cookies. Also almost empty. One of very few non-chocolatey desserts that I love. You can do a month to month subscription that you you can, you know, cancel at any time, month to month, and that's $12 a month, or you can do a year subscription which comes out to $5 a month. So it's just like $60 for the whole year. And they have a policy where if you like don't earn that $60 back in the savings of the products you buy, they will credit you back the difference. You save on every order with just the highest quality organic products. And if there's a product that you find a lower price elsewhere, they'll match your price. Good job. They have a huge catalog of products. I like to do snacks from there, but you can also do like meat, seafood, frozen foods, wine, baby products, and you can filter by a diet, a lifestyle, organic, gluten-free, vegan, keto, and I think like 90 other diets and values. You can customize it to your exact lifestyle. If you wanna check it out, you can join Thrive Market today and get 30% off of your first order plus an additional bonus gift worth up to $60. I'm gonna put a link in the description of the video and thank you again to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video and for feeding me. You're the best. Okay, back to the video. I don't know if there's, I don't know what like my best design advice is, but one that I kind of articulated for myself recently, if you're like torn between a bunch of fabrics or you're torn between wallpapers or something and you're having a hard time making a decision, it helps me and I feel like this always steers me the right way to be like, take, take a wallpaper sample. Which one of these do I wanna just like carry around in my purse all day, whether it ever goes up on a wall or not? And like, if I'd be happy to just like carry it around in my purse or put it in my pocket all day and look at it and like still love it every time I take it out, love it without putting it in context, that helps me choose usually things that I will just like love long-term. If you ignore that and you're just like, okay, but what goes here? You can end up choosing things that you're gonna get, like maybe it matches in the room, but you're not gonna love it for that long. The tile I did in my fireplace in my bedroom, that tile doesn't really like go necessarily with the rest of the room. It's not an obvious choice, but I just loved it and I continue to love it every time I see it there. And it does end up working in the space. So that's the one piece of, I guess, advice that I noticed for myself that helped me like make better decisions about what I invest in. Okay, it's hard to paint in this hall because my long stick, my long stick, I can't even like, these ponytails were a huge mistake. How can you afford such a big place? Multiple jobs? Yes, so I pay $2,000 for this apartment. I think it's like 600 square feet or 700. I can't remember. And people have all kinds of reactions to that. Anyone who lives in New York is like, that's a fucking steal. People who live in DC know it's a steal too. And anyone who lives basically anywhere else is like, I would never pay that much. I would never pay that much. I will never make you pay. I will. I promise I'll never make you pay that. It works for my budget. It's a very good price in DC. Like I know my neighbors who live all the way in the basement, they live the basement unit and they pay like $600 more than me. So I really did get a steal on this unit. When I moved in though, I couldn't really afford it. But yes, I did work multiple jobs. When I moved in, I was working my tech job. I was doing YouTube and I was also taking on interior design clients and it was a lot of work, but I was really enjoying it. And when I quit tech, that was fall 2022, I quit tech and decided to go full-time into YouTube. I was almost making enough money from YouTube, like almost not quite. I knew I would have to like take on other odd jobs to make it work, but YouTube was still growing. So I hoped it would keep growing. And I also hoped that by like going full-time into YouTube and not having my tech salary, it would like motivate me to invest harder because I had to make my rent. And so I was like, it, it felt like the right place in the curve to, to quit and force myself to like fully commit. But yeah, a lot of questions about like doing YouTube, doing YouTube full time. Obviously it's mostly really great. It's mostly really great because I'm doing something that it feels so fulfilling to me. And that's a huge privilege that I know I'm not owed. Like we don't all get to just like do what we like all the time. It's a, it's a privilege. It's the definition of a privilege. And it, and it feels fulfilling. It feels fulfilling to me. So that's amazing. The hard part, what's the hardest part? The funny thing about growing on 
YouTube or social media is that like, I like being liked as much as the next person. I'm as afraid of not being liked as much as the next person is afraid of it. And when you're growing on YouTube, like the more I grow, the more I know I'm closer and closer to being disliked. Like that's just how it works. There's a bell curve. Like when you're kind of small, people don't hate on you. Like why would they hate on just like someone who just like made a video? Like people don't hate on you. It's like as you get bigger that things start to change and that's unavoidable. That's just a fact and it doesn't have to be a bad thing. I do think of it as like it's an important like emotional like therapeutic challenge I need to grow through is like knowing that I won't be liked by everyone. I started a podcast called Not For Everyone. Like it's just a fact. We're not all for everyone. If you're being yourself, who you really are, not everyone will like you. If I feel very aware that like the more traction I get and the more I achieve, the closer I am to people hating me. So that's like a weird thing. That's a weird thing with social media, I guess. Yeah. I feel like it's made it complicated for dating. I haven't figured out how to date. I don't know. Although, you know, dating is always weird, so. It's not like dating was like chill and normal and sensical before. And there's another question about like, did I struggle when my channel blew up? There, I mean, there are like different phases of blowing up. Like the first time, I think it was like a bathroom makeover I did in the style of like Studio McGee or something. And Studio McGee was popular at the time, so that video ended up getting bigger viewership, which it was, it got like 7,000 views, which when you're making videos that get 100 views, 7,000, you're like, oh my God, what is happening? It's crazy. So that to me, that was like blowing up, you know? And then I did an apartment hunting video and that got like, a hundred thousand views and that was blowing up and then i had a video that got like five million views so there's different it's all relative eventually i noticed that every time i had a big surge in subscribers i would have a mental breakdown every time you can see it in the videos i put out too i would put out vlogs that would end up capturing some kind of like mental breakdown because it's you suddenly wake up one day and you have like way more people standing outside your door metaphorically, or like way more people expecting something, or, or even way more people, you know, <sighs> saying they love you. To me, it just feels like all this opportunity to disappoint people. People ask about a lot about like, what does it feel like to get so much internet love? It feels like this amazing validation to find common ground with people on things I care about. Like that's amazing. It's huge validation. It's very, very rewarding. And also if anyone is familiar with self-hatred, like you don't learn your way out of self-hate by other people telling you that they love you. Like it's called self-love for a reason. Self-love only comes from the self. It, it's really nice for validation on like your ideas and your values but it, it doesn't make me feel like I love myself more. Sometimes there's actually just a fear to it. There's a fear of like, if you hate yourself and a bunch of people say they love you, you're just like, oh man, I guess I suck and I'm a, f and I'm a liar. <laughs> I think I used to have a lot more self-hatred. I, I feel like in a much better place with it now, even if it's not on the internet, love from other people. Anyone who's dated a bunch of broken men and thought they could fix them knows well that that is not true. You can't like, you can't like teach someone self-love just by loving them. It has to come from yourself. So in that way, it doesn't have an effect. In that way, sometimes it just scares me. Well, so far it looks like trash in here. Watching a wall get painted is like a whole sexual orientation. It's so rewarding. Yes. Whoops. What if I left just that spot? He'd be so angry. I won't, I won't leave it. I won't leave it. Is a mullet worth growing my hair out for? Yes, easy answer, yes. Sofa made out of cheese or rug made out of bread? <laughs> Please, rug made out of bread. I wanna feel it between my toes. How's your plant doing? It's dead, it's dead. The one that I put by the fire? Yeah, it turns out the fire killed it, it's dead. Did you feel silly when you started YouTube? I've always wanted to, but feel like a quack. Yeah, you, you are a quack. You are a quack. It's a crazy thing to do. It's a humiliating, crazy, embarrassing thing to do to film yourself and put it on the internet. And 
Uh, I was so like lonely and sad and depressed in my life that I was like, well, I don't really have anything to lose. Like life pretty much sucks. That's why I really believe in like hitting, hitting rock bottom. Like, you know, don't aim for rock bottom, but if you wake up and you find you're at rock bottom, sky's the limit. Pretty much, pretty much literally. It's metaphorical, but li metaphorically, literally. This is taking me forever. I don't even know if we're gonna get to me painting the bathroom. I might have to do that off camera because it's t this is taking me forever. Okay, okay, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, hold, please. Advice on how to make a home homey when moving all the time. Any design budget can be divided up into like things that will be a sunk cost, like paint is a sunk cost. This is money that like, it's gone. I don't get it back. Chair, pillow. Something I can take with me. If you know you're moving a lot, um, I would shrink the budget you allow to sunk costs and I would put more of that budget towards things you can take with you. And I would say this, textiles, layering with textiles, pillows, blankets, that's gonna make it feel homey. Plants, duh, makes it feel like someone's living there. And art on the walls, that's pretty much it. And don't be afraid to hang stuff up and put holes in the wall because it has to be perfect. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's not even such thing as perfect. You'll get more and more ideas about what, how you want it to be once you start hanging things up. Like that, that will get things going. So just put it up. Just put it up. We're all gonna die. We're dying. I'm literally dying before your eyes. Like, look at me. I'm tired. How did that even get there? I don't know if this is gonna be like my best paint job. Please share strategies to manage time while dealing with mental health issues. I feel like a uber productive person. I'm not even in the screen, you idiot. I, I would consider myself like a pretty hyper productive person. Like I'm always doing stuff and like even I hit periods where I'm like, for the life of me, I can't do anything. I can't do anything right now. I think the way through that is by like letting yourself, like your body, your mind needs some kind of down period. Don't try and berate yourself through it. Like give yourself the rest period. And then it, it'll probably still be hard to get going again whenever you decide you're ready to like push. It's still gonna be hard. One thing that helps me a lot is I'm like, I'm gonna do 15 minutes of this task, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, that's it. Often the hardest part is like getting going because there's so much going on mentally for you that like thinking about doing it is much harder than actually doing it. So if I just tell myself, I'm like, I'll do 15 minutes. Either I just do 15 minutes and great, I did 15 minutes and I get a little like a steam boost, a little bit of momentum under me. Like I did something, I'm not totally useless. And you let that build, be nice to yourself. Or most often you end up doing a lot more than 15 minutes because the hardest part is getting going. That's, I think, the thing that helps me most. Whoops, oh, I just spilled a lot of paint on the floor. Okay, stupid. Was there an ending to the street man saga? Oh, is this even recording? Hello? Like I shared about it. I think it was in one of the vlogs. I wrapped up that we stopped seeing each other. It just ended up being a situation where I was like, oh, I don't appreciate your intentions. I've seen him on the street several times. He lives on the streets. I mean, he doesn't, like he has an apartment, but um, nothing more, nothing else happened. We don't like text or anything. He's just loose on the streets, living his best life. I got all the paint in my hair. Okay. This camera angle is pretty wild, huh? Very interested to learn your ethnical background. I'm white. I'm white. <laughs> Very simple, classic white. English, Welsh, German, Austrian. I'm 37% Ashkenazi Jewish. I'm Jewish, if that titillates you. How'd you learn to be so vulnerable? It's a defense mechanism. Paraphrase share, if you could turn back time on any home projects, you'd change. My first bedroom makeover that I did, it's on the channel. It was kind of boho-ish, which I don't really like. There are cool things about it, but like, eh, eh. When will we have the lazy girl workout video? That is an exercise video that is coming this way. That's coming out probably later this month, late March, I think. Ooh, for that video, here's a discussion, here's a discussion. I have an announcement. So for the lazy girl makeover, it's coming out probably end of this month. In the last video, I think the thing people liked most and the thing that made it the best was like using mainstream music, like fun music. That's what makes any workout, gets you in the mood, whatever. And I knew that I wanted to use all this music that is like 
I don't own the copyright. So if you use that mainstream music in on YouTube, um, you're allowed to, but it just means that you can't make money from that video. They'll still play ads because that's how YouTube makes money, but the ad revenue goes to the music owners. So you're basically like, you're paying them to use their music as they should be paid. And I'm glad I did that once, but like I can't not have a paycheck every time I do one of these videos. So I'm committed to using the music still. I think what I'm gonna do is that people have asked me a bunch of times to do a Patreon, which is wild. I've, I've never really considered it before, but I think I'm gonna do a Patreon that like, if you wanna contribute, contribute to it just so that I can make um, these exercise videos with the music that you love and that I love and that makes the video so good, makes it fun to work out to, and I can still like have, make a living. So that's basically my idea for Patreon. I've thought about Patreon a lot. I know some other YouTubers do it. People have actually commented, you guys are the nicest. People have commented saying, where's your Patreon? I would, you know, contribute to it. I didn't really consider it until this. Like, if you feel like it, you there's no, obviously there's no pressure to contribute to it. It would be just contributing to, you know, my livelihood and no pressure at all. I appreciate you guys just watching the videos. I don't know what the details are. It, you know, I think it's like a few bucks. I think they're, I don't really know how people do Patreon. I gotta figure out how Patreon works, I guess. I know sometimes people do a Patreon and it's just like, you just contribute if you wanna contribute to support the channel and there's no bonus content. Sometimes people do the Patreon and they have bonus content. I think I'm gonna post some like, some bonus content there. I'll post the like raw footage of me taking like dancing footage. There's gonna be some of that with like me and my brother. I think my brother's gonna be in the next exercise video. Just like the raw dancing footage that's unedited. It's just like me dancing in silence usually. It's, it's so hard to watch. It's so hard to watch. And it has to be somewhere, but it needs to be, it needs to be password protected. If you like the exercise videos and you wanna support me doing them, you can check out the Patreon. Yeah, I'll link it below. If you don't, I still love you. I appreciate you. You're here, you're making it happen. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna experiment with that, we'll see. I just don't want the exercise videos, like I think they're gonna be my biggest videos and I don't want it to always be like having to choose between like making a video I love and getting paid. I've done it a few times. There's another vlog where I also use, chose to use copyright music in, instead of getting like ad revenue, but it's my full-time job now so I, you know what? I love money. I love money. Do, do, am I allowed to say that? I love money. Do you guys not like money? Like, I love it. I don't know about you, but like, I like to have it. I like to have it. I'd prefer to, ha prefer to have it than to not have it. Is that acceptable? That's my pitch. That's my pitch for Patreon. I like to have money. Yeah. I like to have money. <laughs> I've been painting for like five hours and um, that's the first coat. Definitely need a second coat. It pretty much looks like trash. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Can you see? Yes, you can see. <laughs> Those are what the walls looks like. Like, doesn't look great. It's first coat. All right, I'm pretty tired, dude. I don't know how much more of this I'm gonna make you watch. We're not getting to the bathroom today. I'm, I'm, dude, I'm tired. This is a question about how to, how'd you get clients when you first started doing interior design? I had just started posting about my work online and people started asking me to do it. It's so uncomfortable to share your work, right? Like no one likes doing it, but I do think that's important. Whatever your business is that you're trying to grow, I guess like make sure people know that's what you're doing. So that when they see you at the party, they're like, oh yeah, she's doing interior design, blah, 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 blah. That they're like really associated with you. She's started a cookie company. He's a basket weaver. I don't know what are, what are businesses? You know, don't be afraid to get a, a little obnoxious about it. Everyone else is just living their life. They don't care what you're doing. People understand like wanting to start a business. And the other thing is like, I felt so uncomfortable charging people when I was such an amateur. I'm still an amateur. I'm a complete amateur. And it felt so uncomfortable to charge people, but like every professional starts out as an amateur. And so one thing that helped me is like, I wouldn't charge people. I did projects for free and I got advice from one designer I worked with. And she was like, if it makes you feel more comfortable, don't charge them and you'll know when you're tired of that shit and you'll know when you feel like you deserve to get paid. And so I started out that way, I didn't charge people and very quickly I was like, okay, enough of that, I'm ready for you to pay me. And, and they did. If that helps you like doing some projects for free, you know, make them small, make them limited, limit the scope so that you're not working endlessly for free. But if that helps, 
It's a great way to rack up clients, great way to put together a portfolio. The other thing, make your portfolio before you have work to show, make it your own home, your own space. That's what I did, you know, cause then you're not appealing to a client. You can do exactly the design you want. You have complete control and show people like, if I'm allowed to do my work at its best, this is what it looks like. And then share it, you gotta share it. Use your own space as the showroom. Make sure people associate you with what you're doing because eventually somebody's gonna need to hire a designer or hire a basket weaver and do projects for free if you want to, to get comfortable and to like put together a little portfolio. We're gonna do a time lapse. I wanna check and see how this paper protected the floors so that you can know if I recommend or not. I spilled a lot of paint on the floor. I spilled a lot of paint on the floor, look at this. Wow, all that paint, all that paint, and there's nothing on the floor. That's awesome. Some white stuff, but that's just dust, it's not paint. Wow, A plus, A plus. I wanted to do a reveal. Okay, that's the cleanest the floor's ever been. There's nothing on the floor. There's like little specks, but that's like dried stuff from the wall or something. Like this, it, that's not, nothing stuck to the floor. So that is the only method I'm doing now. Papering the floor, cool. Get that foot content. Okay. Pigtails are gone, because they were giving me a headache. Paint on my boob, on my crop top. Somebody complained the other day about my, about my crop top collection. I got a comment that was like, do you own a long sleeve shirt? I don't. And more importantly, the length of my shirts is like the least offensive thing about me. It, it gets much worse from there. And you're, in, you're not gonna have a fun time on this channel because it gets way worse. It gets so much more offensive. <sighs> Pretty sweaty. Did not, haven't even gotten to the bathroom yet. Bathroom makeover is coming out sometime april i don't actually know when probably april maybe thanks for hanging out today there are a bunch more questions i never got to but it's pretty painful to listen to the sound of my own voice for this long i feel like it was already too much so that's gonna have to be it for today hope you have a good night go for a walk i need to go for a walk i'm i am high off these paint fumes i'm not doing well <laughs>